All right, I just want to kind of explain the difference between a dog engagement transmission and a regular synchronized gearbox, which you would find in the traditional six speed or five speed or four speed or whatever it is in your stock uh, daily driver, let's, let's just call it that. In a regular synchronized gearbox, that the way that these work here is essentially, if you look at it the way your braking system works on your car, you have what would be your rotor and your brake pad, the brake pad being your synchronizer. Now, when you're going to switch gears here, the way that this works is your synchronizer acts as a brake, and when you're going to transfer your gears using your selector ring, this is the ring that would be attached to a fork, and that's also attached to uh, one, two, three, four, or five in reverse, or five, six in uh, six-speed cases. When you go to press against that, you have some sort of resistance, and the resistance actually is this acting as a brake pad, which will either slow down or speed up your gear. So what happens here is that this slows down, and your synchronize your, your selector ring here slides over it and engages. So this selector ring freely spins in between everything. The gears will float in between them and when you engage it it's activating the gear and actually this here transfers the gear directly to the counter shaft and then back up into the input shaft and the output shaft and transfers power to the rear wheels with dog engagement the way that you switch gears and the way that the gears are uh, interchanged is actually similar to this but without the the synchronizer so you will not have the brake rotor you will not have the synchronizer and you will not have the actual gear selector uh, ring here which you know helps the actual selector ring slide over the synchronizer and engage the gear instead you will have it just the same exact way and instead of all of this stuff you have a single billet plate that is exactly matched to these dog teeth here and they get slammed back and forth that is what allows my car to switch gears so fast and also ease and no grinding and that's what also allows you to shift clutchless so when you slam them you're either going to run into the face of them and it's going to slide over and fall down or you're going to go straight in and with each one of these engaging at the exact same time because the other plate is a perfect match to these it's going to engage and lock and if you look at the side of these these are all tapered and that is also what allows you to not pop out of gear so it keeps you in gear because they're tapered same thing as these right here you guys can see that they're a little bit tapered a little bit wider on the end here if you were to go into gear and you get on the throttle a little bit and try to pull it out of gear it will not happen it's impossible and if it does happen you're going to start having issues later on because it shouldn't be doing that uh, that's what helps keep it in gear it locks it in gear because if you have torque on there it will stay in gear and that's the same way with these now i don't have any other parts here to demonstrate the gear change of this but if you can imagine a selector ring that floats in between just like these so right here we have uh this is a fourth gear and also third gear we have the selector ring right here this is how it works so this guy right here it slides in between and uh you can pick between the gears that's how that works. Uh, it's very, it's actually pretty simple. I do have some write-ups of transmission teardowns and also the assembly of my dog box. But uh, that is the basis of uh, how this works. Pretty simple design and uh, very, very strong and very, very efficient. Helps for extremely fast and uh, consistent shifting at any RPM, any speed and uh, anything. I mean, it's just so much better than uh, this. This is obviously streetable, a lot more quiet. But uh, this is a much stronger and more consistent. Um, another thing is a lot of people will say that with a dog box you have straight cut gears. As you can see, my gears are, my teeth are actually much fatter than stock. It's still helical. This is what they consider semi-helical because it is actually slightly diagonal. So the gear mesh is still semi-helical unlike these right here so that's where the noise comes from is the gear mesh you will hear obviously from my car uh, but yeah there it is small little uh, lesson on the gear engagement of these two types of uh, transmissions got a lot of people arguing about floating gears and stuff uh, let me just explain to you about gear floating on a synchronized transmission when you disengage the clutch 
all of this stuff is free floating. That's what allows the synchronizer here to freely slow down your gears or speed them up in order to have a proper gear shift. Whenever you do not push the clutch in and you clutch the shift, I don't care how long you've been doing it, your brake pad here is slowing down or trying to speed up the entire weight of the engine and the chassis, all right? It's uh, not a good thing at all. It's not like this where I can just put it in gear. Like there's no brake pad there, it just goes, all right? The gear changes is gonna be the same whether you push the clutch in or not. So when you guys are when you guys are no lift shifting, or not no, when you guys are clutchless shifting, and you find that sweet spot, that sweet spot is the excessive wear of your synchronizer finally reaching the perfect RPM that your transmission and engine are to allow that to happen. That's why if you were to try it and you push too hard, what's grinding is not your gear. What's grinding is your selector ring and your uh, the actual selector on the gear. So you're not grinding gears, you're not grinding the gear mesh, you are grinding the selector ring against these parts, and that's not what you like. So definitely don't be doing that. Not a good thing. I guess obviously if you have to, then you can, but uh, it's that's, it's excessive wear, and that's something I've been trying to explain to a lot of people on the shorts. But that's it, a small little lesson. Now we're gonna go drive the car in a separate video. You guys can follow follow along on that time for part three of the dog box video guys i'll catch you guys in the next one later